Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Can you guys see the PowerPoint? Yes. Thank you. Now, just a recap. Uh, on our last lab, we had an opportunity to check on soil porosity. And we said soil porosity is just the total pore spaces where soil, water, and air is accumulated. Now, today we are going to look on soil water, which is, just, which is also uh, contained in the, those soil, uh, pore spaces that we calculated last time. So, as any other living thing, uh, the plant also requires water for survival and growth. And uh, why my slide are not moving? Sorry, just excuse me. My slide are not moving. I don't know why. Let me stop sharing and start again. I'm sorry. Do you see anything? No, ma'am. Let me share again and see. Can you see now? Yes. Okay, fine, thank you. So today we are going to look on soil water. As any other living thing, the plant also requires water for survival and growth. And uh, 75 to 90% of the plant is made up of water. And this water is always stored in soil so that water can take it through the roots. And once uh, the other alternative, how the water get into the soil is through irrigation. So in order for the plant to uh, grow, it need water. And when the soil doesn't have enough water, that's why the plant growers have to supplement that with irrigation to ensure that the plant are growing. So also the soil act as a sponge to take up and retain water. When you say retain, means to store the water. And this water tend to move either by infiltration, which is the vertical movement, or by percolation, which is a downward movement of water towards the soil. And the pore spaces are the ones that allow the infiltration and percolation to take place uh, in the soil. And uh, since the water is, um, has to move and stored in the pore spaces. So the size of the pores uh, in the soil uh, tend to be related to water holding capacity. Simply the amount of water held in the soil tend to decrease at the amount, I, I mean, at the, the, the amount of water held in the soil tend to decrease at the size of the pore tend to sink and, and decrease too. So they are kind of direct proportion. As a result, when water is diminished, the remaining time amount of water tends to be held at high tension. So that's what we call uh, water tension. And this water tension is always expressed in, as a negative pressure. And uh, due to that, uh, soil can be characterized or soil water can be classified in different groups on the amount of tension that the water is held in the soil. Now, 
we end up having these particular classes. Saturation. Saturation is a situation whereby there's a lot of accumulation um, of water in such a way that all the pore spaces in the soil are filled by uh, water. And this is already at zero tension. And the, uh, the other one is field capacity. Field capacity is whereby, you know, in the soil we have micropore and macropore. So at field capacity is where water is held in micropores in such a way that the water is available for the plant, but the water cannot drain out. When it's saturated, the water can drain out by force of gravity, but at field capacity, the water is available, but cannot be drained out. And permanent reaching point is whereby there's an amount of water in the soil in such a way that even the plant cannot access that water. That's why it's called permanent reaching point because at this point, the plant cannot recover because it cannot have ability to extract water anymore for survival. And we said water is very important for the plant to survival. Then we have hygroscopic coefficient water. This is when by, whereby water is held at a very tiny, tiny colloidal particles of the soil. And this is also not available for the plant. And the last one is oven dry. So oven dry status of the soil, that means all the water has been dried out and there's no water in the soil. And when you look on the numbers, on the right, sorry, you can still have zero tension here. I said um, this tension is always a negative pressure, right? So the higher the number, the higher the tension. Don't bother about the negative because I've said it's a negative pressure. So that's why still it's zero here when the water is saturated. As the water tend to decrease, the amount of tension to hold that water in the soil tend to increase too. That's why you say there's an increase of numbers on uh, this column. Is that clear? Hello? Hello, student. Just unmute yourself and speak up. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, I was asking, is that clear? Like the background information, is that uh, information clear to you? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. So now let's see how we determine those soil uh, water. Like how do we determine field capacity, permanent heating point, hygroscopic water, oven dry uh, water in the soil, specifically in the laboratory. So, First of all, the general concept is the amount of soil is always expressed in percentage of oven dry weight. So we use oven dry weight as a reference because we said at oven dry weight is the point where there is no water completely in the soil. And the formula is always uh, percentage water is equal to weight of the, of the water in the soil over oven dry weight of the soil times 100. Now, in order to determine that, these are the apparatus you need. You need the brass core, which are this one here. You need the filter paper. You need the elastic band. You need the weight balance. You need the descator. It's not here, it's the machine. And you need also oven to dry, I mean, to dry the soil. And you need the soil sample itself and amount of, a certain amount of water. Now to, uh, on step number one, what you have to do, you have to make a ring. So when you say a ring, this is how it's made. So you take the core and the filter paper and the rubber band, and you tie the rubber band like this, and you make something like a ball, and we call that as a ring. So ring is basically uh, the blast core with a filter paper and elastic band all together. Are we together on step number one? Unmute yourself and speak out. Just put um, your mic unmuted so that we can talk. Can you hear me? Yes. Um, are you, I don't know, are you sharing your screen? Is it supposed to just say introduction right now? Oh, 
You don't see anything? No, I I see the introduction. That's what I'm asking. Um, are you just sharing the slide that says introduction? Everyone is seeing that? Yes. Yes. Well. What about now? It's still the same Okay. Let me stop sharing and share again. I don't know what's happening. Okay. What's about now? Okay, it says step one now. Okay, thank you. Sorry. I thought I was talking to you guys and you are seeing the picture. So this is the ring we're talking about. So you have the brass core, then you have the filter paper, and you tie that filter paper with the uh, elastic band, and we call this cells a ring. So basically, we're just creating a bowl where you can put your soil for your experiment. Does that make sense on experiment? I mean, step number one? Yes. Okay. Please let me know if you don't see the next slide. Now, step number two. After making that ring, step number two. It's you still have on step one. Oh my goodness. I mean, it, yeah, it still says step one. It has the two pictures. If you're having trouble, if you want, you can email it to me. And then I can just share it and um, change slides if it's easy. Okay, let me see. Okay, now if I change, do you see the changes? I'm trying to. It shows step two now. Was taking place in my computer. So you're still seeing step number one. You don't see step number two? No, no it's not step number one. What about now? I see step two now. Step step two, not step three. Yes, we see step two. I don't mean showing step three and two guys is showing step three. Okay. What about now? Still step two. Yeah, still step two. Can I share, to, can I send to one of you guys to help me? I'm sorry guys, I don't know what's happening on my computer. Can one of you give me the email I share with you then you help me to project. No, who volunteered to share? Let's see again.
Hello, class. Just hold on. Uh, Dr. Kumi is going to try present on the other side, okay? Are you there? Yes. Okay, I'm sorry for that. Yes, you have it. I sent it yesterday. You should have an email. Yes. Hello, can you hear me now? Yeah, I'm saying my computer give me the alert that it can't take any application for this spray. That's why it's giving that error. So Dr. Kum is going to present on my behalf. So just hold on, like in a few minutes, you're going to be in the class, okay? I'm sorry for that. Class, just give me a, a minute or two. Let me download the PowerPoint. Okay, can you all see my screen? Yes. Okay. Uh, Dr. Kumi, this no. is not the one. This is not the one, yeah. Yeah. Let me see. Oh. You said you sent it yesterday? Yes, check on your yesterday's mail. Okay, let me, let me forward it now. Let me see. Okay, lab six. Yes. Okay. okay. Uh, Is that it? I, I guess yes. that is it. 
that is it, right? Yes, but I've gone through the introduction already. Okay. So, yeah. um, until so, slide seven. Okay. You, you, let me just recap from slide oh. slide five. So, uh, as it is raining now, the soil macropores and micropores are all filled with water, right? Because it's saturated. So, under this condition, the soil water potential or the tension at which the water is held to the soil is very negligible, it's like zero, okay? So at fill capacity, when the gravitational forces of the atmosphere has acted on the, on the soil after the rain has stopped falling, then all your macropores will lose the water and the water will be held in the micropores. At that particular moment, the moisture is held at a tension of a negative 10 to negative 30. The reason why it is negative, it is negative because work must be done for, for the water to be extracted. That is why it is negative, okay? Then from there, when, when uh, almost all your pores, both macro pores and the micro pores have lost the water, and there is just a film of water surrounding the micropores, but they are held strongly or tenaciously on the soil particles that the plant cannot, the roots of the plant cannot abstract it. At that point, we say your soil is at permanent wilting point. At that point, if you have a potted plant that you have gone for spring break, that you have left it in your room and you didn't ask anybody to be tending to them or be watering them. When you come back, all the plants will topple over, the leaves are falling off the branches. Even when you water it, it might not come back to life. Under that condition, when your potted plant is under that condition, we said it is a permanent water point, okay? At that point, the moisture tension at which that water is held is at what? Negative 1500. And earlier on, I said that for the plants, for, for, the, for, the, uh, for the numbers to be written in negative, it means that a lot of work must be done for it to be extracted from the soil. So when the soil is air dry and there is no moisture around it. At that point, we said our soil is at hygroscopic coefficient. And the tension at that moment is what? Negative 3100. Then when it is oven dried, you go and put the soil samples in an oven and set it on a temperature, maybe 120 degrees Celsius for 24 hours. For 24 hours, for 24 hours, for 24 hours, by that time, all the moisture within the soil particles have all gone. So you cannot take any, you cannot account for any moisture in the soil at that point. Okay. At that point, the soil tension is said to be at what? Negative 100,000 when the soil is at oven dry. So what we are going to do is, we are going to mimic what happens when there is rainfall, when the rain has ceased after 24 hours or after some hours, what has happened to the moisture in the soil, when the soil is at fill capacity, or when the soil is at hygroscopic coefficient or permanent wilting point or oven dry. So that is what we are going to mimic. And different soils have different amount of pores, both macro pores and the micro pores. So the way the moisture is held in each soil is different. For instance, in sandy soils, the pores are all big. So moisture cannot hold in uh, sandy soil as compared to clay soil. Most clay soils, have collider properties and they have more pores within them. So 
and the pores are not big. So they are micro pores. So they will, have, they will have or hold on to more moisture than sandy soil. Okay. So that is what we are going to do. So uh, the first part of the experiment is you have a ring, a ring, a rubber band, and a filter paper. The ring is open at both ends. So you cover one side of the ring with the filter paper, and then you use the plastic band to tighten it. So it forms like a one-sided open container. Then you, fed, you put in about 20 grams of soil, the hygroscopic coefficient type of soil, meaning that the soil is air dry. You put it in it and then weigh it. After weighing the paper, the, the, the ring, or what constitutes the ring, and then the paper and everything together, you put in 20 grams of soil. You weigh that 20 grams of soil and then put it in a Petri dish. Then you pour water around the side of the Petri dish. By hygroscopic activities, the water comes into the soil through the filter paper to soak the soil. So depending on the type of soil you have, it takes different amount of time for the soil to be saturated. Under that condition, we say the soil is saturated as if it is raining, as it is raining now. Then thereafter, we fetch about 50 grams of the same soil we are using, lift that ring and the soil with saturated water and put on the dry soil. What is going to happen is that because the water in the ring and the soil is so saturated, the dry soil will try to absorb the excess amount of water that are in the micropores of that ring setup to draw it out. Also, depending on the type of soil, it will, the time will vary. If it is a sandy soil, it will be quicker. If it is a loamy soil, it will, be, it will be lesser the amount of time than sandy soil. And if it is a clay soil, it will also be far lesser than loamy and sandy soil. So when you do that, we will get different soil moisture tension, soil moisture values for saturation, fill capacity, permanent filtering point, hygroscopic coefficient, and oven dry. Then you plot that value against the log of the tensions, log zero, log 10, log 30, log 1500, log 3100, and log 100,000. Because we have a figure from zero to 100,000, we cannot plot that figure on a graph sheet. So we have to take the log of those numbers. And log 100,000 is what? Five. Why, why do I know that log 100,000 is five? Because it is 10, it is one times 10 raised to the power five. Okay, and log 10 is what? One, because it's what? 10, 10 raised to the power one is 10. 10 raised to the power two is what? 100. 10 raised to the power three is 1,000. 10 raised to the power four is 10,000. So 10, the log of 10 will be one, and then the log of 100,000 will be five. So on your y axis, you plot the log of the tensions. Then on the S as is, they will be from what? Zero to 100. So you put your soil moisture percentages there. Then you will draw a graph. Not a straight line. It's going to be like an S type of graph. And then from that graph, you can get your permanent tilting point for your soil. Because remember all that we have done we are calculate, we've calculated for saturation, fill capacity, hygroscopic coefficient, and oven dry soil. We didn't calculate for permanent tilting point. So that is what we are going to get from your graph by extrapolation. Okay. Any question? Okay. So when you go to uh, how to determine 
the amount of soil as a spread in as expressed in, as a percentage of oven dry weight is what the weight of the water divided by the oven dry soil times 100. So in your slide, the current slide, you can see that we have the rubber band here, we have the filter paper, and then the ring. The rings are of different sizes and different weights. And then we have a scale. So we are, the rings are open at both ends. So what we do is we use the filter paper to cover one end of the ring by, by, the use, by making use of the rubber band to hold it together. Okay, so once you do that, you put in, it, it becomes something like this. Okay, then you put in, you take the weight of this. So this becomes the ring. You put your weight, you put, you take the weight from the scale. Then you add 20 grams of soil. Okay, so after taking the 20 grams of soil, you have to record the weight and then And then you put the 20 grams of dry air dry soil in it. The air dry soil we say is what? The hygroscopic coefficient. So you put uh, uh, and, and weigh it. Then thereafter, Thereafter, you take a petri dish or a weighing, a weighing container like this and weigh the same soil. The same soil that you put in the ring, you weigh 50 grams into this, and then you take it out, and then you put your first ring with the 20 grams of soil and put it in a petri dish and then add, by using the squeeze bottle, you add water to the size, okay? So once you soak it for 30 minutes, one hour, you take it out and then you put it on the dry soil. Once you put it in the dry soil, you weigh the two of them together, okay? Then you deduct whatever weight you get, you deduct two grams from it because the filter paper will absorb some moisture. So we assume the moisture and the filter paper will be equals to two grams. So whatever you weigh, if it is 160, if it is 160 grams or 170 grams or 181 grams, you, you subtract two from it. The two is accounting for the amount of moisture that is in the filter paper and the weight of the filter paper. Okay. Then you let it sit here for about 30 minutes to one hour, depending on the type of soil you have for you to get the field, uh, to get the field capacity condition. So the first one you did that we are adding water to the size for the uh, soil in the ring to absorb the moisture. We, had, we were trying to create saturation condition, but at this point we are creating a field capacity condition. Okay, then you take the weight, After you have equilibrated those two things that the dry soil have taken excess moisture out of the soil, you weigh this dish, which we call an empty weighing can. Normally it's between 8.3 and 8.4 grams. Then you take this, you take the whole ring, brush the base with a brush to take care of, to take away excess soil that will be attached there. Then you put it here and then label it with your group name or group number. Then we put it in an oven for, um, you put it in an oven for 24 hours to get the oven dry weight. So in effect, by this, we can calculate the saturation, the fill capacity, the hygroscopic coefficient and the oven dry. So all we have not determined is the permanent melting point. So once you, you do it and you plot your graph, we can calculate 
uh, the weight of the ring and the dry soil and the weighing dish, the weight of the ring, the weight of the weighing dish, with step-by-step -step procedure as you have been given in your worksheets. Then that will take all the figures you are looking for. Then you can plot your graph. And you know that in plotting graph, we plot y axis against s, right? Can you all hear me? Hello? Hello? Can you all hear me? Hello, student. Are you there? Hello? Hi, we can hear you. <laughs> so in your sheet or in the worksheet that you are given, step by, there are step-by-step -step procedures by which you can calculate the saturated soil, the weight of the saturated soil or the saturate, saturated moisture condition, fill capacity moisture condition, permanent, uh, hygroscopic coefficient water condition or moisture condition and oven dry. Then from there, you can calculate everything and you plot those you have calculated, they are the moisture uh, te tensions. Then you plot those ones on the S axis. Then you plot the tensions you have been given like 0, 10, 30, uh, 1500, 3,100 and 100,000 on the y axis, the log of those numbers on the y axis. Then you carefully draw a line in between your points. So, where there is a sudden change in the curve, that becomes your permanent tilting point. Any questions, any clarifications you want me to make? Hello? No questions. Do you understand what I was saying? Did you all understand what I said? Yes, yes, sorry. Okay. So we'll be here and the work will continue next week. So go and do it. You, have you been given the data sheets and, and the numbers? Hello. Hello student, did you check your blackboard? You should have the assignment on this lab with um, data to, on, uh, to work on the calculations. Have you checked? Okay. If you check and you have it and you are doing it and you have a problem, my office is in 205 Campbell Hall, or you can send me an email, akumi at askiki.edu, and come over and set, an, and set up an appointment and come and, and let's look at it. Or if you can, if you want me to go over it, you can send me an email, but don't wait till the date of submission before you start calling me. So go, you have one week, go and look through the whole work and see where you are having problems or where you cannot, where you did not understand or you cannot do. Then you call me or you call uh, uh, Miss, uh, Miss Devota to, or Dr. Nkuma for further clarification and, and explanation. Okay. All right, over to you, Devota. Thank you, Dr. Kumail. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank you so much. All right. Now, hello, students. If you don't have any question, uh